Welcome to Making a Band 101, my comprehensive guide to getting your musical project from your head and your plans to on the stage and in your community. This podcast is designed for individuals and groups that are either new to musical performance or re-energizing their project. All seven episodes are chock full of industry tips, tricks, and secrets, and will give you the knowledge and the confidence to create success in a robust musical portfolio. I'm Drew Jones, and I can't wait to get you in my head and give you all the essential knowledge I've obtained in a 20 plus year music career with thousands of onstage hours in a performance portfolio. Without further ado, let's get into it. It was the fall of 2019 and one of the local professional sporting teams had created a competition to find a performance group to play for their home opener. And that the band or the, the dance team or whatever, whoever ended up winning was going to end up playing for 10,000 fans and have an after game performance as well. And, you know, be caught up in this amazing crescendo with the community. And we had thrown our name in the bucket just for fun. And I remember looking at our website and I, I do this maybe once a month where I'm just kind of checking analytics and lo and behold a couple days before I checked it out you know we'd had hundreds of hits on our website and a few hundred clicks and I thought oh man somebody's checking us out so I messaged the group we should be expecting a phone call we're getting like a significant amount of hits and lo and behold a lady named Amy phoned me up a day later and we had made it into the audition portion of the competition and from there we ended up winning and from there, we ended up getting signed to the Saddle Dome as a contractor to play in-game and after-game performances for three different professional sporting teams, including the NHL team, the Calgary Flames. And uh, that entire portfolio lifted us into being one of the best-known bands in the city and attracting major corporate bookings and huge venue bookings and lifting our name and our brand into sort of the upper echelons of the local community. And we had sensed this coming down the line earlier that year. Every gig we played uh, up until that point in 2019, uh, people would come to us and honestly, they would say to us, wow, it's, it's like I'm watching a band that's about to become famous. And we had hit this really amazing crescendo in the community and we had hit our stride as a band. We had our sound. Uh, at that point, I believe we had about three original albums and our songs were just so great. And our cover list was growing as well. And we were hitting kind of every musical environment and really excelling. And this will happen to you as a band, where you will feel like you're hitting the ceiling of your opportunities and you're about to break through into like another environment. And how do we keep that going? How do we make sure that as we're feeling this synergy happen, as this crescendo is happening in our community, how do we ensure that we're capturing that energy and allowing people to discover who we are? And this is the premise of this this lesson or this episode, which is your marketing, which is how you're capturing your band outside of the music on all your different portfolios to ensure that that echo effect of playing music to your community is, is kind of coming back to you in an echo, that they can find you, that they can celebrate you, that they can understand what you're about, learn more, and really grow with your identity, grow with your entity, and that we can allow this crescendo to lift in every way possible within the community. So the key takeaway right at the top end of this episode, and it's a bit of a chicken or the egg kind of moment, is you got to have a great website and you have to have great photos. And so it's the chicken or the egg, right? Like what came first? How do they see it? These days you also have social media, which I'll talk about a little bit later. But as somebody who's been involved locally performing and gigging, but also as somebody who's held multiple venue bookings and I'm booking bands quite regularly, I can tell you right now, the first two things that really matter for any band right out of the gate, doesn't matter how good you are, is a simple, clean website and up-to-date, clean, professional-looking photos. These are the two most important elements of your marketing. And let's talk about those two elements right now in more detail. So there's a lot of great content out on the internet about how to build a great website. And there's actually a lot of good content that alludes or instructs for bands as well. And I've read a lot of that content and I agree with most of it. And so if you want to go do a little research after listening to this, by all means, go check it out, see what's best for you. But I'm going to kind of tell you from a booking agent's perspective, what I think is the nicest and, you know, best slash easiest way for a startup band to get going. And so my number one recommendation is have a website that is essentially a landing page. But realistically, regardless of what the layout of your website is, I would highly recommend not making a website with multiple pages. 
this is effectively going to increase your bounce rates as people need to sort of like navigate what's happening. Um, it's, it's just best for they land on one page and they can just scroll down and see all of your information sort of like in succession or in chronological order. So you would start with you know, information, which includes a photo and a song, would go down to, into learning a little bit more about your successes and why they should care. It should move into highlighting other parts of your music profile or video profile. And then it should move into bookings and how to book and where you're being booked and a list of your shows. And then maybe at the bottom, you've got information about the social media or in more more amazing opportunities that you've done or photos or yada, yada, yada. But realistically, your website should show who are we, what do we do, why should you care, what are we doing now, and how to get more involved with the socials or otherwise. The reason why you want to include this information this way is so that you can capture the attention of the individual who's seeking your band as quickly as possible. You want to show them immediately the most accurate and quintessential representation of your band. A lot of this industry or people wrapped around the industry with events and corporate and weddings and whatever, they don't have a lot of time to look and to dive deep uh, and they might not even care, believe it or not. Again, us artists, we think everyone's going to care so much, they're going to want to get wrapped up in our journey. It's like, eh, they might if, if they become really great fans and if they want to jump all in, but nine times out of ten in the early days of our band, people got a referral or they learned about you or they're trying to answer uh, your inquiry into their venue, and so they want to see as quickly and as easy as possible, why should I book you, what are you, um, and, and to make that decision. So again, we don't want to take them on a journey of clicking on all these pages. That would, again, that's going to increase bounce rates. I get frustrated as, as the booking guy. I'm like, really, you want me to click on all that? I don't, I don't got time for this. Like it should be right there on the main page. It should be a one page landing page and I'm just scrolling down song. Okay, perfect. Click on that. I haven't even read anything yet. Just listen to the song. Oh, this is dope. Okay. What are they about? Listen to the song, reading the profile. Okay. It's a one paragraph profile. They've done this. They are that. Oh, they're a pop rock band. Okay, cool. Or they're a metal band or they're like an indie you know, I don't know. So you, you just keep going. Oh, let's scroll down a little more. Oh, there's a video here. Okay, sweet. Rad. Okay, wow. They hold up live. Cool. Well, at least from this video. No, no, no. Go down a little more. Oh, they played there. They played there. They're booking there. Good. All right. Oh, I'll respond to this. We'll look to find them a date. And there are other tools that will be in your toolbox that I'm going to talk to very shortly in this episode that will go along with your website when you start emailing and having conversations. But your website is a quick, simple, here's what we are. Here's what we do. Here's the contact information for bookings. Here's where the bookings, the stuff I already covered. But again, I'm just hitting this over and over and over again because your website is kind of your storefront. It's really simple. It's just this is what we are and this is why you should care and run us through the finish line or take us to the next level of communication where then we can get going around, you know, other details such as, you know, our EPK, our socials, our referrals and, uh, you know, logistics, money, all the rest of it. And so back to the chicken or the egg and what I promise you is probably maybe even more important than a good website is maybe possibly really good photos and they kind of go hand in hand and from a artist perspective this is the number one feedback I have heard year after year from booking people especially when you get into good venues especially when you get into good festivals the feedback has always been that we've had great up-to-date photos and so, you know, number two most important thing, or maybe even number one most important thing for your marketing portfolio is having up-to-date, clean photos. And so this would be both photos of the band sort of standing on a line, uh, you know, giving like the quintessential band photo that you'd put like in a news article or on a CD cover. You know, it's, it's just showing the five homies all in a line looking tough or whatever the vibe is, right? And then and then photos of the band on the stage. And so you can kind of see, oh, that's the vocalist. Oh, cool, that's what the guitar player does. Oh, he's the drummer, okay, cool. So, you know, it would be bringing out a photographer every season or twice a year to your shows and to have them take these photos. So again, one is kind of like a posing photo uh, to make it look edgy or cool or whatever your vibe is. And then to have you guys on that stage. And so what my group does is usually quarterly, we bring out a photographer we have two or three of them locally that we work with um, that are okay to work for like a couple hundred bucks and we ask for about 12 photos listen we don't need 50 photos from a photo shoot we've we've had these things happening yeah, honestly we've had like 100 photo shoots or more so it's like 
I pay somebody to come out for an hour. Here's 200 bucks. Send me back your 12 best photos of us. You know, two of them were off the stage in front of this building or in a cool situation where we're posing or looking rad. We usually do it in the middle of a busy street. It's hilarious. We'll actually wait for the traffic to stop at a light and we all run out into a street with a photographer and she takes a photo of us and we look like kind of badass in the middle of the street. I love that photo. That's been our archetypal photo year after year. It's it's a lot of fun with the lights of the city and the street behind you. It just looks super rad. Uh, so we'll do one of those outside of the venue and then we'll have her coming in and taking photos in the venue of us rocking out. Get 12 photos every season and we're continually updating our our photos on our website and what's happening on the socials and uh, and it's just nice to have a lot of photos to have everything documented and to see how the the van the band is vibing how people have changed every once in a while we bring in subs into these photo shoots because again they're happening quarterly so we can include other members and uh, yeah it's just nice in the uh, the bank of memories and and to see our socials and our website sort of evolving over the years but you know having nice clean photos is crucial it, it, it is the number one feedback from booking people that we work with and again, it, and, and it transcends back onto your website and back onto your socials as all these little marketing pieces. And of course, you're going to have photos that people took of you from their phones in a moment that added you on the socials. And so, you know, there's there's always the mix. But what I'm talking about is those really clean studio type photos. And again, you do want them live as well. Uh, you just need somebody with that nice camera to come in and snap those because your buddies or your friends or the people who are in the crowd who at you on the socials and you screenshot or whatever, that's that's not enough. Venues, festivals, booking people, whatever, they, they need that photo so they can, you know, save it from your website, save it from your Facebook, right click, whatever this is, even from Instagram, snip it out of there. They want to be able to take those photos and use them for promotional purposes or to have you send it to them and, you know, give me, give me, give me a photo. And then the same people kind of show up for the gig that were in the photo. This is your identity. This is your brand. And we want those things up to date. Uh, it, even as the booking guy myself, it's a bit, it's, it's not frustrating, but it's a bit weird when you know, they send you a photo and then it's a completely different lineup that, that comes out. And, and I don't think that helps those bands when they're on the stage for people to connect the dots, for people to understand what's really going on here. Um, you know, and, and unfortunately or fortunately in this industry, the, the music's just not enough. Even at a local level, we kind of need to maintain a connection back to the crowd through these little marketing pieces that, that exist. Uh, so the website and the photos and things up to date are great and we want to mix together on on all those those platforms the photos that are taken organically but our professional photos that are taken maybe twice a year or once a year or quarterly or whatever works for you and i do want to emphasize keeping this as simple and as you know in your temperament or in your mentality as possible my band we don't take ourselves very seriously, even to this day, even after having a lot of success locally. We kind of keep it fun. We kind of keep it granola. We keep it interesting about ourselves. And I'll speak a little bit more to that in this episode as well. But our brand is sort of like your neighborhood band, the guys next door who rock out, who are fun to hang out with. Uh, you know the guys who who are are almost accidentally finding success. That's a bit in our in our culture as a group, um, you know. And we like to present ourselves that way. We're not a super serious, posing. We're gonna rock out and blow your minds away group. And and I see that. I see bands doing that. They want to embody, you know, that attitude from like the 80s and 90s or whatever. And uh, <clears throat> and sometimes you see that. Let's say in the punk world, I love punk music personally to listen to. And on one hand, you have punk bands that are like super fun. You know, the music is intense and it's hard, but you know, their image is fun, lighthearted, kind of goofing around. On the other hand, you've got these punk bands that the music's super hard still, and they kind of embody that that hard, gritty kind of thing. And so, you know, it, that's a good example, because this could go either way. So just, just you know, do what you want to do. Talk about it with the group. How do we want to, how do we want to line this up? How do we want to build out our website? Again, it's going to be super simple, five different elements, like I talked about earlier on, landing page. The photos can be in this way. You're going to update them seasonally. You're going to have fun with it. Uh, and you're going to build out this fun situation that you have. And, and again, it is to have fun with it. You should be looking forward to these photo shoots. You should be looking forward to these updates. It's just, and if, if anything, it's an amazing, uh, you know, asset in the memory bank. It's an amazing memory in your mind. 
you know, your social media, your website, these photos, it's, it's for you to look back on, you know, when this thing all ends 20 years later, five years later, whatever. And you said, Hey, we did all that. Look, remember when that happened. Remember when that happened. And even while it's happening, y'all are re- reminiscing together and enjoying the moment. So that's the fundamental mentality behind doing this. It's about fun. It's about connecting to people. It's about sharing your journey. It's about, yeah, celebrating what you're doing. And, and if it, if anything, just for yourself, but also people will get caught up in that with you. And I think they'll really appreciate and love the journey. Okay, so we we were gigging, we've got our website, we've got our photos, we've got a couple of good videos now because lo and behold, our photographer can also sit and, uh, you know, get, bring a tripod or whatever, sit with the sound guy, line in even, take some good videos. And all of these assets are building out this cool online presence that we have and people are liking all of our stuff and it's starting to feel good and, and people are recognizing our brand a little bit and so what's next? And so I would say um, looking for a logo actually is a good way to do it. It's a good way to align an image very easily with your band. And I've seen a lot of bands use just a, a pretty standard photo as sort of their logo, but other bands, including my band, we actually do a, a real logo. And so you know, you, you find somebody who's okay with digital design or maybe a member of the band uh, knows a tattoo artist or right there's somebody who can draw or do something where you kind of slap a logo together. I personally think the easiest way to do a logo is just to do a nice word logo to get a good font, something that represents what your group is about and just put your band name in a cool font. And these things are available online for free or you can pay the artist who creates these fonts and you can do a nice little word logo. But I I do think it is nice to have a logo with a band. This is a bit of an old school idea uh, but I, the bands that I book regularly, uh, my group and all the bands around me, we have a logo. It can be the icon on your social media. It can obviously float on your website. It can be the icon there as well. You can slap it on a banner that floats behind the stage. We do that a lot. We've got a banner we use for every stage that, uh, or the, sorry, that we hang when we when we play stages that that's appropriate. Uh, your drummer can stick it on the drums. You can stick it on shirts. It's just, it's nice to have. And again, this doesn't have to be complicated. It could be a word logo. It could be like a bottle cap with your name in it you know if you're playing pubs a lot or whatever uh, if you're like this fun mountain town you can stick it arcing above a mountain little image that you find or someone draws for you you know there's just so many ways you can look about and you can use influences from the scene or popular music to kind of draw from and create your own and have fun with it again don't overcomplicate it. Uh, it people don't really really care it's just another way for you to you know, connect the dots. And if it's a killer logo, fair enough, throw it on a t-shirt or let it evolve or find a buddy who's all about that. And then all of a sudden the logo they made for you is on your merch and they feel good about that. And right. But there's some synergy you can have there with buds. But otherwise I would say, don't stress out about this. Um, Find something that you can play with that uh, you can turn into a logo and uh, align that with your brand as well. Eventually you're going to want to discover doing something like a music video, doing some more complex and unique videos. And obviously music videos, the first and foremost thing that you can do, or, or like a music video that's sort of in the studio of you guys performing a song, uh, something that's really polished, something that's lined in, almost like a live recording set to a video. Most bands on the journey of showcasing what they're about and capturing an audience will will do this naturally. This is so obviously, you know, in the DNA of the industry. It's in the DNA of of bigger bands that we see uh, everywhere from MTV to YouTube to whatever's happening. And so, uh, you know, finding a photographer or to, or a videographer that's willing to work usually for cheap to do this. It's usually a play space for them. They're usually growing with you. Uh, that's what you want to do. And so I would say find someone who's on a similar journey that you are, someone that's new, someone that's learning. And as your band is new and is learning as well, get together with them. You're both at the same place of, you know, growth in your trade uh, and in your artistry and you want to grow together. And so, yeah, pick pick that person, grow with them, find a reasonable amount of money they're willing to work for. Maybe they're even willing to do it for free because they're just seriously brand new. And uh we had that with a photographer slash videographer in our area and this individual ended up you know he ended up doing movies literally he went to the highest level so he ended up doing movies in the long run uh he did video game shows uh he got huge grants to do stuff for tv and uh he's now teaching it as well in one of the local colleges 
and we grew parallel to this guy. He was just starting off, and, and both our groups sort of crescendoed into uh, a huge success. I think it was quite coincidental, but also showed the passion that we had, and it was fun to do that. And so we've always worked with younger videographers, artists, take risks with people, have fun with it. And there's all these different little elements, especially if you're on TikTok and these more video-oriented social medias that you can kind of have fun with it. Side note, these things do take a lot of work and you're not usually producing them as quickly as let's say like a selfie video or stuff coming right off your phone. And those things are all good too, right? You want the organic content and the stuff reshared from people adding you and the moments that you took from on the stage. And you know, as the one guitarist is soloing, the other guitarist kind of pulls out his phone and captures the stage reaction or the crowd reaction, right? That stuff's all fun and dandy. But what I'm talking about is stuff that's a little more polished, stuff that you can throw on a website regularly on the socials. This is repeat content because you've got four good videos and we continually share these things. We have them on our YouTube page, They're used for promotions when we're booking bigger events. They're they're you know great videos, great assets that convince people to book us, right? You need two, three, four, five, six of those things max. And this is the content that maybe every other year we're refreshing this video content. One or two good videos in a studio type situation uh, or from the studio because we were just hitting the studio every two years with a new single, new EP, new album, and, and this is where we're capturing it. And so these costs can be associated with those environments as you're getting into it. There will come a time where you're getting kind of more further into the quote-unquote industry situation and this is usually going to be around some sort of booking person or a high-level venue or a high-level festival and they're going to request an EPK. So this is your electronic press kit and so I encourage you to pause this right now and just you know web search what an EPK is, look at some references that are that exist uh, that they're just readily available on the internet and probably the best way to look at an EPK is just see what other bands have done so I would web search you know electronic band electronic press kit example and just see what other you know huge bands have done and kind of just copy that um, but ultimately you know there's articles written about this and what you should put in your EPK etc 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 essentially your website is an EPK and so I get frustrated sometimes when booking people request an EPK as like a PDF or a PNG and I'm like listen bro you could just go to our website so this is kind of an old dog kind of situation uh, and it's still kind of like an industry standard sort of resume type thing it seems redundant but it's what they want so you're going to want to put together an EPK using the references that are online uh, and gleaning from the the um, web pages that are there to instruct you how to put this together but I would say you know just do it just give these old dogs what they want um, it's kind of this industry standard jump through a hoop it's annoying but you know do it I, I don't request EPKs with the bands that I work with I've got a brain I go to a website I look at their socials and so yeah this this thing is a bit frustrating to me it's giving value to where value doesn't need to go because these manager types are like I'll put an EPK together for you it's like listen bro okay fair enough yeah, you do you buddy and so these are those old school industry put you through hoop mechanisms that I think are slowly dying and you know it's just again these guys making value where before you know bands didn't know how to do this or they didn't understand how to do this and so it's like here's the value and what I can do for you these are managers who are putting together a website EPK you know all the rest of it and so you know in this day and age we can learn how to do this ourselves and, and again the EPK against the website against the socials is losing value these old dogs in the industry still want it so just give them what they want um, you can represent other aspects of your journey or get really into the details of your successes whereas your website might be a little more brief so that's the way I do it my EPK is way more into the very specific details of our band success around a few different opportunities we've held and a little bit more into our the creative process around our albums and why our original music is also awesome so yeah you can use this EPK as just one more deeper insight into the band instead of getting frustrated that these old school industry dudes want again one more thing that they had value in in the past that is slowly kind of dissipating but you know put it together for them have it on standby if they request it broom you've got a kick-ass epk and uh you know play the game all right as we come to the end of this episode i want to speak to the social media and i'm not going to really give you instructions or insights into what social media to use i think 
you and your group need to figure that out yourself. There are obviously very popular social medias that are happening and ways that we can represent ourselves. And you might have a band member that uses a social media regularly and they want to, you know, create the band pages and host that and have fun with it. And it's been my experience that social media can get a bit annoying from time to time. At times it is a bit of a necessary evil and you know off the back end of a busy weekend you've got to reshare all this stuff or create content or leading up to the weekend and it it can feel like a chore so you know we don't want any of this to be a chore we want this to be fun we want it to be a part of just our love of what we're doing and it it should be it should all just be a byproduct of of playing the music and having a good time so if if you have a member of the band that really you know really super enjoys doing this or can you know put up with it a little more than other members then put that in their portfolio, help have them run the social media, create like a shared Dropbox or on your message, your shared message, you're you're sharing all the photos that happen. And right, I think most bands are doing this after the weekend, there's all these different photos that happen. So people are just dropping all the photos they took into the uh, little shared message situation or maybe into a shared Dropbox or whatever that is. And, And yeah, so, you know, find the social media that works for you. What I would suggest doing for your social media contents and sort of the angle is I would keep it granola. I would keep it insightful to the specific members of the band. I think the power of social media is to say as personal as possible and to bring people into the minds and the behaviors and the interests of your band members, right? We're going to want to represent the entity of the band and create a brand and show our music and show, you know, these three, four, five, six, I don't know how many people are in your group, like performing, creating music together. But then around that, it's like, here's the funny thing the drummer does. And here's why the lead singer is such a weirdo. And here's what the guitar player is about. And, you know, here's us eating beforehand. Here's that ridiculous thing that happened at the party afterwards. Here's the right. And so that's, that's the fun stuff. This is the, like the deep sort of character and nuances and the, the moments of exploration and growth that can happen as a viewer is getting stoked about your band and you know they saw you at the show and they're like oh I love that music actually I'm going to follow them go to the page oh this looks kind of fun oh look at all all these shows these huge performances they've done that are pinned at the top of their social media that's rad oh and then oh these guys are so quirky or this and that happens or she's super rad how she does that and you know the list goes on so that's kind of the essence we want to capture I believe I think that's the power of social media whereas your website is a little more polished it's a little more about the entity you know and but yeah as these things cascade into the depths of who we are the social media gets us really personal and it's really fun and I think that's the way really famous people do it if they're running their own socials it's not so much just like these cookie cutter images and what you'd find in a magazine it really is like oh wow I'm seeing the insights and the depth of this person on this media and that's why this is awesome so let's get into it together. I highly recommend using the photos that you are taking that we've already talked about in this episode as your key promotional tool. You will eventually start to consider doing posters. A venue will start to do posters for you. Uh, But when it comes to the social media, please don't recycle sort of like marketing or commercial type images on your page over and over and over again. I see bands that are like very, very active on social media, but their page just looks like an advertising company because it's just like, you know, words and poster type documents that there's no soul, there's no heart. On the other hand, you find bands that are doing the seasonal photos, uh, that even with selfies and their cell phones are taking okay photos around that as well. And so the page is mostly you know, the band showcasing itself, looking friendly or looking tough or looking whatever they need to do. And it's a really nice catalog of photos versus a catalog of like an advertising firm or something like that. So, you know, don't get lazy with it. Really like show yourselves on there, let the page and let your social media be about you and market yourself with organic images and putting words over them or in the description highlighting that next gig you know or whatever the dates are and all the rest of it Uh, as great as posters are and and there's a place for posters there's a time for posters we want to showcase ourselves we're you know we're modeling our behavior and our faces and our identity back to our crowd we're not modeling 
images and words from a poster. I don't think that aligns at all. So, you know, keep that in mind as you're building out your portfolio and as you're building out your presence through the social media. Last but not least on this topic, I think what's important is that you showcase the crowds as much as possible that you are posting with. So my band in the early days of being a local band and finding a lot of success, we were doing like selfie photos, we were doing photos of, of us like pre or post show, and we we're kind of creating moments that were about us and that's all really cool. But as soon as we started posting more about the crowds we were playing with, uh, and showcasing, you know, the, the the extent of the performances we were doing and kind of that was, I think, more attractive to an audience. I think it really also showed our quality and, and the credibility that we had because you can look back at our socials now and you can see the crowds growing, 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 yes, getting to these massive stages. And so, you know, this is a bit of an ego move, uh, but it's I think it's a good ego move. You do want to show that, wow, we're really growing. And so <laughs> we often step off the cr- off the stage, right? Even these massive stages we've played, we'll step off the stage and we'll get a photographer or somebody or we'll do a selfie with like all the people. And, and we love doing that. We love having moments with the crowd and showing like we just played a huge stage. It, is it bragging a little bit? Is that part of our journey and have we earned that? I think we have. And so I would encourage you as you hit the bigger stages, find a way on your social medias to show that like, wow, man, like we're hitting big stages here. We're worth kind of checking out. Um, you know, shameless self-promotion is is all you kind of have in the early days. And part of that is really showing like, hey, we're hitting these stages now. We're doing it. Like we deserve to be looked at. You know, if you were to take extra time to visit our website or to click on a link or to hear the music, you'd learn it there. Obviously, it, for, it starts with the quality of the music. Hopefully you're, you're, you're putting the music together and it's it's just crushing but uh but if anything you're, you're showing that like hey we've we've earned these stages we're on an upwards trajectory and jump on the bandwagon let's go there's so much more to the marketing that would be very specific to your group and what's required after an evaluation is done and the next more obvious or crucial steps can be identified and these are services i provide in my artist mentorship program which you can find at www.thefrontiersteam.ca this is where i'll work with you or your group for one two or three sessions to really dive in deep and give you specific instruction and build into your portfolio specific assets and essentially help you uh, in in your journey to attain that next step so if you're interested in applying for the artist mentorship program again that's www.thefrontiersteam.ca and you go for the application button at the top of the web page. My goal is to create autonomy in bands and give you the skills and the insight to take your project yourself to the next level, to the point then where you might need a manager. You might need a booking agent further down the line. When it's new and you're growing it, that you have the skills to do that yourself and so that you can be independent and autonomous in your community, playing music and having very little boundaries on your art. And I also look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Cheers.